Defending Utah covers the stories others are just too often afraid to touch. They don't nibble around the edges when it comes to pointing out threats to our liberty. They're not afraid to name names and call out organizations. This is Defending Utah Radio. Every Friday morning at 9 on K Talk 1640. Defending Utah. Think right and wrong, not right and left. Join Defending Utah because if you're not already on a government watch list, you should be. Um, unless you've been totally disconnected from the world lately, you probably, I mean, everybody's probably heard uh, that in the last few days we had a horrific uh, attack on some moms and children that were driving in two SUV vehicles in their home area and in an area that was and is uh, contested territory among the drug, drug cartels in Mexico. This is about 70 miles south of the Arizona border. We're talking, I mean, I try to go see my dad who's in his 90s. I try to go see him every Wednesday and, and visit with him and spend some time with him since my mom died a year ago, May. And, uh, you know, we go to lunch and visit about, you know, whatever. That, that's a side trip. But he's about 70 miles away. I mean, this is not like they traveled a great distance to get in harm's way. They were on an outing, mothers and children. And the drug cartels, some drug cartel, ambushed them and killed three mothers and six children. There are other wounded children that are currently being treated in, I believe, Arizona hospitals. Horrific. They set the vehicles on fire. Dead men tell no tales. I guess same with dead women and children too. But some of the children had managed to get out and be in the brush. Now, here's the deal. They're about 100 miles from the nearest uh, military post. The nearest military post could have been there, even in the most, you know, you look at military convoys, they kind of creep along sometimes, three and a half hours. It was like eight or nine, eight or nine hours later, the military first arrived. It was kind of like the sheriff deputy that didn't run in to stop the shooting down there in Florida. Who, what, me? I Maybe there might be some of those threatening guys still there. We better make sure that we've given them a chance to hightail it, you know, that's, to me, it's just absolutely absurd. But nonetheless, that's what happened. And so these were people in their home territory got attacked by an ambush. And uh, apparently there's a turf war going on between a couple of the big drug lords that are there. Horrific, horrible. Now, my opinion, and those of you that have been with me for very long know that there's there's very, 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 you've got to have re really good reasons to go to war. And uh, the Mexicans don't have a constitution worth talking about. But when you stop and think about the personal level that war comes on, you know, if 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 you have lost, you know, if your people are losing their lives, your people, okay? Uh, if you've lost your conscience, your freedom of conscience, if you've lost your private property, can't exercise, you're going to starve to death. Okay, those are some things. If you can't worship your God and, and practice your religion, if you can't provide for your family, and that has to do with, um, you know, having private property and being able to do that kind of thing. If, if you're not able to take care of your wives and your children, these are some things that are kind of, well, let's put it this way. You don't cross those lines. And, and I think that the people that have that happen are justified in, in retaliating in, in a manner that will solve the problem. Okay. And, and if you're protecting in all those things, it's probably, you know, you're probably, you've got other avenues you can play. But maybe we'll come back to that in a minute. I got to see how long I'm going to take in this answer because honestly, uh, the people that were attacked are farmers. They're they're not they're not warriors. They're common folks that work their farms. And by the way, these are U.S. citizens. 
they're, they're, they have dual citizenship, Mexican and American, and I'm not sure that that's a good idea in most instances, but, but, uh, but that is nevertheless the case. They have dual citizenship. These are folks that have ties into the, uh, into the United States, very strong ties. And, and they're just basically farmers. And uh, so they're not really ready for war. But it seems to me like uh, when those kinds of people that are, that are destroying your society are, are running amok down there, they maybe ought to have a discussion about that. And I don't know if, they're, if there's anything that will, if it were me, and I don't know enough of the circumstances, I think I'd, my, my first intention would be to consider a guerrilla warfare type thing. You know, 155 grain spitzer boat tails at 300 meters with, um, you know, hit and run kind of tactics. Uh, anybody responsible for this should not be allowed to continue to walk the earth. Okay, having said all of that, the um, uh, United States has offered help to Mexico. Mexico is a sovereign country. Uh, Mexico has declined that help. Uh, 103 years ago, in 1916, Pancho Villa and his marauding band of communists uh, encroached upon the United States. Just, you know, they came across the border and decided to see what goodies they could grab, kind of like what a lot of the people that come across the border do now, only they were out, we offer them <laughs> goodies. But they uh, came across the border into New Mexico and the United States people that, that held their Second Amendment rights responded and uh, some military organizations got, that were close by got involved and they repulsed the, uh, the marauding band of uh, communists. Uh, Pancho Villa was a communist, uh, make no bones about it. He, he and his cohorts were communist red flaggers is what the people down in uh, the southern part of the United States called them in those days, as well as those Americans that lived in Mexico. So, uh, subsequent to that, uh, Pershing and some other elements of the army, including a young, I think he was a lieutenant at the time, uh, George Patton was involved in, in incursions into Mexico to try and bring Pancho Villa to justice and never really worked out. Anyway, it's another long history lesson that I won't, I won't go off on. But this activity with these drug lords down there is in an area that I kind of consider the ungoverned area. If you can't get a military force there for eight, nine hours after a full-scale military attack on women and children, it's basically ungoverned. And part of the problem, I believe, is that, that in Mexico, it is rampant that um, functionaries within the government uh, are providing cover for these, uh, these cartels. They're on the take. They're in their back pocket. They're perhaps even part of them. And that's that's a tragic kind of situation. And the people down there need to take control of their government again and get rid of these uh, tin horns that are that are basically providing cover for, for drug cartels. All of that is kind of an internal problem to Mexico. And, and uh, uh, without going into a long drawn out explanation about some of those things that might be done to stop it, I believe that it's it's kind of like, uh, I think it was about 1968, might have been 69, there was a movie that came out called Billy Jack. Uh, it was uh, kind of a cult movie, not well acted and kind of hokey in so many ways. But there was a scene in there where Billy Jack came on the townspeople who were about to commit a a, a crime by slaughtering the wild horses that were there. It's uh, without a lot of that description. I'll I'll leave that late. But Billy Jack went to stop them, and uh, uh, somebody in the crowd yelled out to him, "Billy, we have the law with us." And there's this classic one-liner response that Billy Jack used that is so true, and it was, "When the law breaks the law, there is no law." And I suspect that's what's going on in Mexico right now. So the, the people that are in charge are not fulfilling their responsibility to protect life, liberty, and property. And I think that needs to change. Uh, the, the Mexican people really need to, to kind of take control of their lives again and, and take control of their country and, uh, and begin to turn this around. 
In the interim, I would say absolutely, unequivocally, completely, and totally, those people that are down there, that wives and children are at stake, I would say you probably ought to secure your wives and children and then make sure that uh, nothing like this ever happens again, even if it means um, creating some, some pain for some of those that are going about this. And uh, again, I don't know as a full frontal assault will be acceptable, but somebody has to have some backbone just to make it so that this doesn't happen. Having said that, I have been down to Mexico, I don't know, a number of times, been alone, I've been with friends, I've been uh, with my family. I've been in areas that were denied areas where, where you know darn good and well, uh, things are not right. When you come to double bunkered sites, I mean, double bunkers are necessary to overcome an RPG attack, rocket propelled grenade attack. These are, these are sites where you know that they're high risk and they're using, if, if the opposition, if the bad guys are using rocket propelled grenades, you know they're not just coming in and, and shooting with AK-47s and so on. So you know you're in a, an area where uh, some of the armaments are a little heavier. At any rate, I, I've, I've been north and south and east and west. Well, not so much west. But at any rate, um, my opinion is that Americans ought to say, I'm not going to go spend my money in Mexico. That's how I feel about it. I will never go back because I don't believe that we need to continue to grease the palms and line the pockets of, of those that are, are basically milking the U.S. economy and, uh, and ultimately and finally they're in cahoots with a lot of these drug cartels. I don't know as 100% of more, but I think a very high percentage of more. But the fact of the matter is uh, I... I, in my conscience, cannot say that I am ever going to spend another nickel in Mexico because these problems are so rampant and, and there are no good, there's no good reason for me to go down there. I just can't imagine it. But having said that, people, these are 70 miles away from the U.S. border and people are dragging their feet, whimpering and, and whispering and crying up at the top of their lungs, we don't need to secure our borders. This is the kind of stuff that happens when we allow criminals to take over swaths of country. And that's exactly what these banditos are doing. And truthfully, there are sections of Arizona right now that are off limits to Americans. They are absolutely far too dangerous. And, and they're posted as such. Do not enter. It's an ungoverned area, basically. They're, they're creeping across our borders. They come back and forth at will. They bring in uh, things that have been determined and even constitutionally, you can say that in Article 1, Section 8, the United States has uh, the, the right to regulate commerce with foreign, eight, foreign nations. And they're bringing in substances, um, harmful. They're bringing in um, human trafficking, the United States is a huge participant in human trafficking, prostitution, child abuse, all those kinds of things are happening across our borders. And the United States needs to, to basically take control of their borders so that we don't have these kinds of incidents encroaching farther and farther into the United States. And they are coming farther and farther in. We've got MS-13 gang members placed throughout the entire United States based upon our porous borders and our horrifically poor enforcement of what every nation has the right to enforce is the sovereignty of the nation. And, and if anybody comes in, it, it must be by permission, by legal processes. And, and people say, oh, no, it's, it's a right of uh, humanity to, to do, go anywhere they want, in hum, human, anywhere they choose to go, across any border, whatever. That is not so. Sovereign nations have the right and the responsibility, the duty to protect their borders. If they cannot or will not, they will no longer be a nation. And we could look at example after example after example throughout all of history, going back into ancient times even, where that is proven out. And I tell people, you know what? Even God has immigration laws. If you read John 3, 5, it says, except a man be born of the water and of the spirit, he cannot enter the kingdom of God. 
God has rules for coming into his kingdom. And, and every sovereign nation has too. So for me and my house, if you will, I will not spend another nickel of my money in Mexico. You do what you want. The other thing is, this is another, in my opinion, strong reason that we need to stay out of the USMCA, United States, Mexico, Canada agreement. That agreement not just softens our borders, it almost erases them. It's a step towards a North American union. It has more open and free exchange of, across our borders in terms of human migration, as well as, as uh, uh, goods and services. It creates a international body that destroys the constitution in the fact that it no longer allows the United States to establish its own rules about importing. You know, how are we going to, Congress shall have power to regulate commerce with foreign nations. It takes that power from Congress. Congress will no longer have that power under the USMCA. It has protections for uh, climate things. Uh, we talk about the Paris Climate Agreement. There's stuff like that woven into the USMCA. There's stuff woven in there about strengthening the union capability to, uh, you know, people can join unions if they want, but to have an international body governing whether or not and how unions are dealt with in the United States, that's, that's another thing. It takes away our sovereignty. Another thing is that they, they have protections that uh, basically override, if you will, not because of any constitutional authority, but because that's the way it'll be applied, override the, the gender issues that are found. Uh, however, anybody or any place, see the national government doesn't have any authority to, to regulate or, or involve itself in that, but it's gonna have an international body that does that. There are so many things wrong with the USMCA. And, and I, I tie directly those challenges to this horrific massacre of women and children just 70 miles south of our border and say, if you want more of that stuff and you want it to encroach farther into the United States and you want more ungoverned areas and you want to be forced by an international body to do certain things that violate our existing constitution, well, that's exactly what you've got with the USMCA. So there's so many things to be said about this and I've taken more time than I should have most of the questions have deeper answers than, than might meet the eye. But, but, but uh, honestly, this horrific massacre, just 70 miles south of our border, I think is the shape of things to come. If we open this country to the lawless graft and corruption and criminality that runs rampant in Mexico, and I would hope that, uh, that somehow our congressmen and senators that are someday going to vote on this will have enough common sense to defeat it and throw it back in the trash bin. This Defending Utah presentation brought to you in part by Anderson Accounting, andersonaccounting.com, Trust Plumbing, 801-808-5470, Higher Calling Firearms, HigherCallingFirearms.com, Pioneer Family Scholars, Black Lotus Web Dev, BlackLotusWebDev.com, American Appliance at 801-254-2566, Shem Financial Services, 801-856-6151, and the Law Offices of Garrett T. Smith, 801-477-1570, and the Water of Champions at ChampionsNeverQuit.org. It's a fact. More photos of you are being taken than ever before. Are you ashamed of your smile? At last, a new technology that gives a brighter and healthier smile in under two hours. And it's fully warranted, so you'll never have to worry about your smile again. Call Dr. Jeremy Thompson at Thompson Dental, 801-254-0835, or visit GoNewSmile.com, and we'll show you how you can restore your faded, yellowed, or worn teeth without surgery, crowns, or implants. And it's backed by a 30-day, 100% satisfaction money-back guarantee. This scientific breakthrough will painlessly transform your appearance in one visit. The smile you've been waiting for will never cost less or look brighter than it will today. Call 801 
254-0835 or visit gonewsmile.com. That's G-O-N-U smile.com to revitalize your smile. New smile. It looks good on you.